Hi, I'm Wayne from TC Electronics and Marine. Um, what I'm going to try and do is to basically just go over some um, problems I get phone calls for in regards to um, the oil and the oil leaking and draining the oil. So, a couple items you're going to need, of course, is going to be a pail to drain the oil. Um, I'm just going to go over some of the stuff. You're going to need a oil pump, which is this item here, to fill it. It has a three-eighths thread on the end. You just we're going to have to unscrew this, which is very hard to do with the camera on. There we go. And this just threads into the thread. Uh, now, the thing is, basically, um, this is your standard oil pump. This threads into the bottom thread. And this is an oil pump for use of for those of you who don't know. And it basically just slides in here. There is different sizes of these. So sometimes the tube is too long. You need to cut the tube a quarter or a half inch, like in this case. Or you can just bend it a little bit and then screw it in. And then you would just pump it. Until it starts coming up and you'll 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 know by the dark uh, green oil that's coming out if you use this is lower unit oil this is a quicksilver oil you can use Sierra's or Walmart's or anyone's it's just lower unit oil it's a number 90 the uh, marina ones um, are a little bit better than using the straight 90 they, they absorb the moisture but, you know, as long as you change it once in a while, like every 50 hours, it kind of doesn't matter which one you use. It's up to the individual. Okay, um, so just to show you, this is the top oil cap screw, which we're not going to open until we... Um, I'm cheating a little bit because um, I have a fixture here. Okay, this is your oil screw here. Now, normally you just take a take a screwdriver that looks like this. Regular screwdriver usually opens it, okay? But these aren't the phone calls I get. <laughs> for the ones that can use a screwdriver to open it, I don't get the phone call. So it's not really for the. So the normal person just undoes, undoes this, undoes the screw, and after he's got the screw undone, slides the, um, and a uh, couple of questions I keep getting, that there's like a bit of, there's a magnet on here and it, it picks up some residue and that's that's normal to have a trail of a 30 second to a 16th of inch um, gear filings on there from uh, say 50 to 60 hours so uh, that would be that would be normal it's not unusual but a lot of people phone me and ask me about it some of them send their drive in and say it's broken uh, and they're only they don't realize that uh, that would be normal heel to toe wear in on, on the gear set. Um, so it's normal. If you don't see it, somebody's changed it or cleaned it. Okay, so so that's it. You would pull the gasket that's in there. You'll probably need a small screwdriver or something to pop the gasket and take the gasket out. Okay, one thing I'm going to go over here though is there is a 
couple of different drain screws. This is a magnetic drain screw. It's sold by GLM or TC Electronics and Marine. This is what it looks like. Normally you'd have grease on it. Um, but on one side it's completely yellow with the Teflon and that goes to the drive. On the other side I don't know how well you can see this, but it um, it's it's the stainless steel part is showing here. So the stainless steel part goes toward the top of the screw. So go together like this, so that once it's on, it would look it would look like this. Or in this case, this one's already on. It would look like that, and you'd put grease on it and seal it out. These, these work extremely well, make a good seal. But you can use the regular type one, works fine too with a bit of grease, and there's a felt one, and that works fine, the black felt one. These, these don't stand up too good. If you take them off once or twice, they, they pretty much fall apart after a while. So the reason I primarily is putting this video together is um, when outdrives have impact damage or they've taken the um, the drive the oil in and out uh, or tightened it up too many times it's it's quite often they they strip the um, strip the uh, threads so they can't get it out um, can't take it out So, in that case, if this was on here to the point where you couldn't get it off, you, you use one of these impact uh, wrenches with a flat at the end here. They sell them in the auto stores. They're very inexpensive, like somewhere between $14.95 and $19.95. comes with a variety of tips. In this case, you just want the flat one here. You put it in and you use a hammer and the hammer when it pushes down turns it. Each time you you push it down it turns and you would just hit the hammer enough times to to get the screw started hopefully. Again this is only after impact damage or else if the thread is damaged. Normally you can just use a regular screwdriver. If the thread is damaged, then you you have to go to Plan B, and uh, basically that's to take this, remove the screw, if the thread is just, if it's not too bad, okay, and it's just got some junk in it or burrs or whatever because you cross threaded it, a lot of times you can just put a tap in, a regular tap, like this, and the size of this tap is a 3 8 16 national course, just a regular 3 8 national course tap that you can get at the auto supply store and it'll straighten up the threads for you. In most cases this, this will clean it up and you'll just be able to screw your regular one in. But in the cases where there's nothing left on the inside here and it's stripped, um, then you need to go to a thread repair tool, or in some cases they call it a Healy coil. Um, and what it does is it comes with a tab that's oversized and it. Um, has a little Healy coil like this and, and what it does is it just puts a set of threads an extra set of threads in this hole and actually ends up stronger than it was originally this is made out of stainless steel so in order to install this you you just take a drill put standard drill like that put um, 
in this case a 25 64 drill in okay and you drill it and it's going to be a little bit bigger than than the 3 8 that was in there you if you're not pulling the bearing carrier out um, you can still do this upside down you can either drill it with some oil in it with the oil coming out or you can blow air in the top of the unit and um, most of the drilling that you're that you're drilling okay will the little pieces and filings will will come out the um, if there is a small amount of aluminum that was to go inside the housing it would just grind up in the gears and for the most part it would just get in, disintegrated in the oil um, and if it's as long as it's aluminum there'd, there'd be no problem with that okay so we, we're gonna drill this you're gonna blow oil air in the top of the unit so that there's a stream of air coming out so that you don't get any filings inside the unit so then at that point we would tap this you would take this unit here and you would place it there we go fits on this and you just put it in here and you would screw it in until it's about one, a half a thread below the lip okay just a shade below the lip so that um, the screw can still seat out on the outside edge of of this you, you need the outside edge to seat out to to seal it to seal it before you install this you would you need to put 680 loctite retaining compound we have sample units that they sell for like a buck 95 it's a little tiny tube I don't really have any with me here but I know that TC electronics carries um, little small tube so tenth of an ounce or so it's a really really small amount it's only enough to do one seal but it would work fine for this Healy coil um, the Healy coils or the the retapping, uh, there's they're sold online. If you need one of those, you're probably only going to use it once. But um, some of the automotive, actually, not the automotive so much, but the bearing supply places. Most of the bearing supply places carry these. And that's pretty much it for uh, this end. Uh, the only and the only other thing I run into is is filling the unit so after the unit has been drained you would, um, you would then fill fill a lower unit here place this in down so it doesn't leak all over which is easier said than done with one hand there we go okay so you would fill the lower unit here you would start squeezing and it'll start going in and you would keep filling it getting weak in my old age So this is the way you'll be looking at it from your boat. So it's on my right side here when I'm looking at the front. Okay, the port side. Okay, and you'd be pumping it. And you need to take this off before you start pumping it. Okay, which is the top vent screw. And if the vent screw was to strip it's a lot easier to fix it's a 5 16 though I don't, it's a smaller hole
but you can take the four caps off remove the four four bolts here off the cap and you could repair it pretty easily because you can take it away from the unit you don't have to worry about blowing air through it so bottom line is you would fill it keep pumping the bottom I think it takes about two quarts I'm not sure each one is different depending on the size of gears that's inside of it and you would fill it not sure if you can see it here but there we go. it's hard to see but there is a mark there okay about a half inch from the end and you just fill it till it goes over that mark about a quarter of an inch and there's uh, there's one more thing um, I get a lot of calls where they where they say that water is going into the unit but, but what it is is um, it's not water it's air and so the oil is all churned up and there's some oil there's some air in the oil and if you're not sure what that looks like just drain it out put it into a glass and see if it separates if it all just turns to to look like like that okay like just a plain oil you'll see the air will come out of it after a while and it will just settle and if there's no water separating from it then there's nothing wrong with it it's what you're looking at is just air in the oil and you took you probably drained it too soon before the the um, oil had settled like if you just finish using the boat and you take it off and you drain the oil it's going to have some air in the oil probably okay so that said you need to check to make sure that there's a gasket on the top here you can normally reuse the same one for the top and um, you can see the dipstick there and so you would just fill it until it hits the dipstick you can see like that it's almost there you want to just go about a quarter of an inch above it okay and then and then it would be full that's pretty much all there is to it um, changing the oils doesn't take very long at all there's not much to it and and this changing it and putting the Healy coil in and and drilling it uh, it may seem overwhelming but the whole episode takes about a half an hour to do the whole job it's, it's not that big a job it's just arranging you have to blow air in the top here um, to make sure that the filings don't go in and there's one other thing when you're all finished screwing in the um, the helicoil or whatever there's a piece of stainless steel in the bottom of it uh, and you need to get some needle nose pliers and break it off and make sure that this does not that little tab there does not go into the gears if you do not get that little tiny piece of steel out with the needle nose pliers you're going to have to pull the bearing carrier out and flush the or pour some oil in the top or whatever you have to do or whatever um, you need to get that that stainless steel piece cannot fall in it will damage the gears it's not like a little piece of aluminum that will get ground up it'll it can cause the gears to break if that little piece falls in there so just got to mention that for sure so just put some needle nose pliers in when you're all finished screwing it in put pull it up and down and make sure you take out that little that little tab when you're installing these otherwise it will cause a lot of problems thanks for watching um, if you like this video please um, click on the like button have a good day